Hello, and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of Dungeons and & Dragons and other tabletop games and bring them into 5th edition so that you can use them in your current 5e campaigns. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about a very special creature construct. The Web Golem is a creature not comprised of the World Wide Web, but of spider webs, and it's a golem. And it's super gross. And it's really sticky. But gosh darn if it ain't one of the neatest little critters I ever done seen. Anyone who's familiar with D&D is no stranger to golems and the various traits that almost every golem has, but if you're not on that same level, let me explain it to you. Basically, golems are constructs created out of various materials such as clay, stone, iron, or copious amounts of spider webs and they are fashioned to a humanoid form given life with magic and sent to fulfill some purpose. Golems are usually used as guardians of certain areas, often protecting important people or powerful magical artifacts. They could of course also be used in warfare, but the most important thing here is that they have no alignment, they are not living creatures, they are masses of materials animated by magic and given purpose to basically follow the instructions of whoever created them. So today we're going to talk about just exactly what the web golem is, how it fights, how you'd use it in combat, and of course some plot hooks and ways that you can use it in your D&D campaign. But before we get into those plot hooks, the first thing we need to understand is how this creature fights and what its abilities are. So let's talk about some... Web golems, as their name would suggest, are both golems and made of spider webs. So a lot of the things you're imagining are true are probably true. For starters, they have that pesky ability to resist all different types of damage that almost every golem has. They are straight up immune to cold damage, necrotic damage, poison damage, as well as bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage if it's coming from a non-magical weapon that's not made out of adamantine. They're resistant to acid and thunder as well, meaning some of that damage will get through, but they're not going to take the full brunt of it. And in a shockingly non-golem-esque fashion, they are vulnerable to a type of damage, that type of damage being fire. So fire is going to be the big weak point for these guys. They resist or straight up take no damage from almost every other damage source in the game. So if you were thinking, hey, maybe this golem won't be just the worst to fight, well, you'd be wrong, because like every golem, it is the worst to fight. Especially because that magical resistance not only factors into the damage that it's immune or resistant to, but also in that it is literally resistant to magic, meaning it gets advantage on all of its saving throws to resist magical effects. So that means even if you hit it with a fireball, it still has advantage on the dexterity saving throw to try to take some less damage from it. Another very golem esque thing about the web golem is that its attack kit is pretty simple but it has like a million different traits. So let's take a look at what its actual action kit is. This creature gets to make three attacks per turn, two slams and one bite. Those slam attacks are pretty standard golem slam attacks, they just hit for a ton of bludgeoning damage. And that bite attack is going to show your players that the spider fangs which it has in its mouth are not just for show. It causes a bit of piercing damage but also forces the target to make a constitution saving throw and if they fail, then they take a bunch of extra poison damage. And if the poison damage is enough to knock that character down to zero, they don't make death saving throws, they're immediately stabilized, but they are unconscious. Even if that unconscious character is healed, they still remain paralyzed until the poison is dealt with, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. That means these golems are going to be excellent at knocking people out and capturing them. Keep that in mind for later when we talk about some plot hooks. Another thing that makes this creature great at capturing things, much like the spiders and web theming that inspires them, is the fact that they have the adhesive trait. This is a trait in 5th edition we only really see in one other creature, that creature being the Mimic, and it works almost exactly the same way. Basically, anything that touches this creature sticks to it. That of course includes creatures, so that means if this thing hits a target with a slam attack, not only does that creature take some bludgeoning damage, 
but also it is now being grappled because it's stuck to the golem. This can be a huge pain in the ass because all your melee characters, their weapons are going to be sticking to this thing. And they're going to have to be making strength saves to pull them off after they hit with them. And then when this thing starts slamming back, it's very possible that at some point the entire party will just be stuck to it in a big death ball. But... If the party is able to use fire or acid against it, it turns off this adhesive trait as that kind of layer of adhesion is burned away and it takes a round for the golem to kind of regenerate that property. Meaning that as long as they can keep a good supply of fire and or acid damage going on this thing, they don't have to worry about that. Great. Something else up one of this creature's webbed sleeves is that it has pretty much all the same abilities that the giant spider has, meaning it has web walker, web sense, and spider climb. That means that it can climb up walls, it can hang off of ceilings, and ignores any of the movement restrictions caused by webbing, and if it's touching a web, it is aware of all other creatures and objects that are touching the same web. Something it does gain as well that the spider does not have access to is the regeneration property, meaning it heals 10 hit points at the start of every turn if it starts its turn in the area of a web spell or any type of web, really. So if you've got this thing in a layer that's being dominated by giant spiders, it's going to be healing 10 hit points every turn, basically. You can probably start to imagine what an encounter with this thing might pan out like. It's going to be trying to ambush as best as it can using that spider climb to stay out of unwanted positioning and just basically grappling everyone and crushing them to death. Classic golem shenanigans. These guys are pretty neat though and they've got a little bit of a leg up in the pizzazz department when it comes to other golems so let's move along and talk about some. So obviously these guys are made of webs, and the first thing that comes to mind is, I don't know, who crafts a lot of stuff with webs? Oh right, the drow. If we're talking new drow lore specifically, it's gonna most likely be the Uda drow, who are followers of Lulth and just seem to fucking love spiders for some reason. The first thing I thought of when I looked at this creature was how mean would it be if you did an encounter where the party was fighting a web golem and its body was just crawling with tiny little poisonous spiders? You, you had a swarm of poisonous spiders on its square and then it would try to grapple the party members and hold them in and be like slamming them like punching them in the face basically and all the spiders just start crawling on them and biting them that's very mean and i highly suggest you do it because it's disgusting also these guys fight really well with giant spiders so it doesn't have to be drow necessarily but anyone who's able to tame giant spiders or even just put one of these golems and hide something in a den where giant spiders tend to be, they play very well together because the web golem can ignore all those pesky webbed up traits that the spiders love to put everywhere while simultaneously using it to its advantage to ensnare the party. Also, big bonus to anyone who's running a Curse of Strahd campaign, these guys are exactly the type of creepy monster that the Count himself would keep in the manor. Maybe not like in in the manor, but around it, guarding it, you know, doing golem stuff. I also love the idea that there's some type of wizard or artificer or whoever makes golems trying to make one of these things just as like a pet project pretty much just to see if they can and they petition the party to go get a bunch of like highly valuable spider silk that he needs for components so they have to go and go through this whole spider dungeon and maybe end up fighting and killing like a giant spider that they have to get some like the fangs from that or something it's a good excuse to make your party go fight a bunch of gross eight-legged freaks short of playing on the spider silky web stuff both thematically and mechanically it has the abilities to back it up these golems are going to function pretty much the way almost every golem does you know they're going to be used as guardians defending things sometimes they might wander off if their creator was killed and they're just kind of left to their own devices they're just wandering around following whatever the last directive their leader gave them was golems are just neat in that because they are created and can be created by so many different people and then even secondarily purchased by a lot of different people from the people who create them you can kind of put them anywhere. You know, like the only excuse you need for a web golem to show up is like, oh, whatever dungeon they're in, the owner of which thought that web golems were cool, so he bought one on eBay. Do people still use eBay? Is that a timely reference? People still use eBay for sure, right? In any case, that's pretty much all I've got about the web golem this week, so thank you so much for watching. If you have a monster you'd like to see show up on Monster of the Week, definitely leave a suggestion in the comments below, and I will add it to the list, and you'll probably see it show up on the channel sooner or later. As always, thank you 
you so much for watching, and of course there is a 5th edition stat block conversion of this monster in the description below in the form of a Google document, which will contain everything you need to run this effectively in your game. And of course if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can find the monster stat block posted over on the Patreon. If you're new here, welcome, what up, thanks for watching, hopefully you subscribe and I'll see you again real soon. And I will catch y'all next week with something else equally, hopefully not as gross. Until then.